the Houston Rockets have been one of the most, I'll say, interesting teams over the past few years who obviously did bottom out following trading their franchise cornerstone in James Harden. Although they did miss out on both Scoot Henderson and Victor Wembanyama, and when I saw them got the fourth pick, I thought they were kind of screwed. The Houston Rockets have definitely redeemed themselves and managed to save their franchise so far this offseason. They had an outstanding draft night and hired an outstanding head coach in Ime Udoka to shift their culture around. And I think the Houston Rockets have a very, very bright future. And in all honesty, I think that for both sides, this should not include James Harden. And I'm not just saying this because I'm a Philly fan who wants Harden to resign because in all honesty, like, yes, I do want Harden to resign. We don't have a better option, but I'm not like, honestly, I'd rather him walk than pay him a, a you know, four year near max deal. In all honesty, a four plus year near max deal. I'd rather him walk, but this move just made no sense for either side. I mean, looking at the Houston side of it, first of all, it's a move that doesn't make you competitive now and will hinder you in the future when you are trying to build a competitive team around your young core right now. Yes, James Harden will help the development of, uh, you know, their young guards and definitely, you know, help, you know what I mean? Like he, he, you know what I mean? Like him helping them would definitely be a big thing. However, he would also inevitably, you know, take the ball away from these guys. And, you know, I, I forget who said this, but uh, like, I, man, I, I'm really forget. I, I think I forget if it was Paul George or who it was, but it's like, you have to go, go through getting double teamed and being the focus of the game plan to really, really grow as a star player in this league. Like, if obviously, you know, James Harden's gravity and the amount of defensive attention he will command will definitely help Jalen Green and Eamon Thompson and, you know, obviously the rest of the people on the Houston Rockets and make the game a lot easier for them. But when that time comes when James Harden is either one gone or two continues declining and is at a point where he is, you know, not, you know, potentially even a six man on a, you know, maybe a 40, 50 million dollar contract. I really just don't think we'll, st I mean, I mean, that was the rocket side of it where I really don't think it makes sense because as I said, it doesn't make you a contender today or tomorrow. All it can do again, it can help. But also I think if you have Jalen Green and Eamon Thompson going through it themselves and, you know, really, you know, becoming leaders and running that team. I really do think that that will benefit the Rockets more in the future. It would be one thing if they could contend right now with James Harden, but they really can't. And all it's going to do is, you know, maybe prevent them from getting a guy like Jalen Brown in a future free agency, which I will get into more later. But the other side of it, obviously, is James Harden. And I mean, listen, no matter how you feel about him, going from, you know, a suppose, I mean, listen, I know, oh, we've been a contender for the last however many years, can't get out of the second round, ah, blah, 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 blah. Bottom line is, we, I mean, especially relative to the Houston Rockets, we have a competitive contending roster. We finally have a real head coach, which, uh, you know, took a took a whole, you know, it, it, it took a pretty good amount of time for that one to finally happen. And, you know, maybe, you know, again, I mean, Daryl Morey is a troll, so I don't actually know what's going on. But there are a lot of teams with interest in Tobias Harris, and I think, I mean, God, at least I don't know, man. <laughs> I might just be lying to myself, but... I do think that at worst, we will get a mid-season deal for Tobias Harris. Some team will fall apart and be looking to make a change. Or maybe we'll fall apart. <laughs> no, but uh, going to the worst team in the league from a situation with the MVP is pretty, pretty crazy. Like, like no matter what your position is on Harden, I know a lot of y'all are Rockets fans watching this. A lot of y'all love Harden. I, I understand why you want Harden. Listen, I understand why you'd want him, and I understand why you may disagree with me, but you gotta understand, like, well, one, like, you gotta admit, like, I'm bringing up good points here with, you know, Jalen Green and Eamon Thompson's development, as well as, uh, you know, you don't contend today or tomorrow with him kind of thing. I really do think Houston will be much better off getting some elite role players that will complement their young guards and building back up their culture and going for a big fish free agent in, you know, 2024, 25, 26, instead of basically just settling for, you know, James Harden, which is what you can get. And again, you know, obviously he's really good right now, but he's getting older his timeline does not match up. His contract will cripple the team. You know, again, I, I just want to, I wanted to get this out of the way because I, I don't think it's going to happen, you know, anymore, but there was a time where I kind of really did think it was going to happen and I knew it was always a real thing, but it really just makes absolutely no basketball sense for either side. 
But as I said, I do think the Rockets will be much better off bringing in quality role players to fill out their rotation, rebuilding the culture with Ime Udoka, and keeping their cap flexibility open to hopefully bring in an established star, you know, maybe a Jalen Brown, who is around, you know, you know, you know, an established star who's around 27 to 30 in free agency, or potentially use their draft capital and young assets to make a move for the next young star who asks out. They have a ton of Brooklyn picks, and all of those will prove quite, quite valuable. Now let's dive into the Houston Rockets draft. They started off by selecting Eamon Thompson from the overtime elite at the number four overall pick. He reminds me of my NBA 2K17 six foot seven playmaker build. He has wing size and guard like quickness, ball handling and athleticism. While there's been some concerns about his jump shot, if he can even kind of figure that out, him and Jalen Green should form an absolutely electric backcourt. And next up is what really, really made me want to make this video, which was getting you know, seemingly certified top 10 pick and a guy who was projected as high as five or six in many mock drafts in Villanova's Cam Whitmore at the 20th overall pick. The 18 year old has been said to have one of the most NBA ready bodies in the league and has all the tools to be an ideal modern offensive wing who I think could help the Rockets a ton in the near future as a spark plug off the bench most likely and then as a quality starter and then if not you know I mean he could be a low all-star level player if not more than that listen you know there's definitely obviously probably some kind of concern definitely obviously probably <laughs> all right but you know what I mean there's there's probably something there with him sliding to 20 but I do like the Rockets finally being the ones to make that call for Cam Whitmore in a, you know, relatively low risk, high reward situation at the 20th overall pick. As for the rest of the roster, I think a lot of their guys will be at least quality NBA players. Not going to get into Jalen Green. I mean, you know, I mean, we know what Jalen Green does, you know, pure Hooper gets buckets straight up or Eamon Thompson. You know, I mean, I just talked about Eamon Thompson, but starting off with Scoot, not Henderson, but Kevin Porter Jr. I think he could really, really be a quality six man if he is willing to accept that role, which, you know, at least I hope he'll be able to. But, you know, obviously he has the talent to start somewhere, but I think, you know, his position on a competitive winning team should be as a six man off the bench. I do think that is where he fits in. Next up, we do have Jabari Smith, who has the potential to fill an absolutely crucial role in the modern NBA, that of a versatile, elite defensive 3 and D wing. You know, obviously, pre-draft, he was hyped to be more than that, but, you know, even if, well, one, if he can be more than that, that is absolutely amazing. But, you know, depending on, you know, what the Rockets are doing, you know, they have Eamon Thompson, Jalen Green with the ball in their hands a lot. Maybe they go and get a Jalen Brown or something. You know, obviously, they have Alperin Sangoon, who I will get into, who also, you know, I mean, you know what I mean? Like, helps if he has the ball a lot. So, you know, I, I do see a pathway where Jabari becomes an absolutely elite, elite role player. And don't, you know what I mean? Like, I say role player, but, like, for some reason, people get the idea of role player just automatically means, like, bench. And, like, I don't, like, being an elite three and, like, like you, you can be, again, like, he could be an elite, elite role player and make $25 million a year at some point. If he is, you know, as valuable as he could be on defense and a knockdown shooter as people expect him to be. He did start off last season a bit slow, but, you know, I mean, I, I mean, man, he's a rookie, you know what I mean? Playing on an absolutely, I mean, listen, Rockets, I mean, I mean, y'all know, y'all were the ones watching the games. I mean, I watched some Rockets games, but I, I mean, I ain't gonna lie, I wasn't, I wasn't watching that many, but y'all know how garbage they were, right? Like, man, y'all saw Dame drop 70 on y'all. I'm, I'm sorry to bring this stuff up, but, you know, I think Jabari, especially, you know, if you are going to keep Alperin Sangoon there at that center spot, is going to be very, very crucial, especially defensively. Because as we saw with Jokic, and listen, Alperin Sengun is obviously not Jokic, but as we saw with Jokic, if you surround a center with some defensive deficiencies with the right kind of defensive wings and, you know, guards, that, you know, you can definitely win around that. And listen, great defensive pieces such as Jabari Smith, potentially Tari Eason. And listen, y'all, don't, don't kill me. Don't kill me. But Dylan Brooks could be a really, really good pickup for this Houston team. I'm not going to lie to y'all, man. Dylan Brooks could be a good pickup for this Houston team. And in all honesty, I think whatever team gets Dylan Brooks is, again, man, like, obviously, you know, he has the whole media thing right now, blah, blah, blah. He didn't play great in the playoffs, but Dylan Brooks is a, I mean, like, he's a valuable player. And for whatever reason, people think he's going to get, like, there are actually people that think he's getting, like, a minimum deal. And they're going to be, like, shocked when he gets, you know, like, at least 12 at least 12, probably more like 15, 18, because I mean, I don't know. I don't want to get into a complete salary cap thing, but like 
Bro, if I'm Dylan Brooks or, you know, again, people are like, oh, Kuzma asking for 30 mil is absolutely insane. Jeremy Grant asking for 30 mil is absolutely insane. If I'm Kyle Kuzma and Kyle Kuzma's agent and I see Duncan Robinson and Joe Harris getting 20, I'm asking for 30. You know, he'll probably end up getting 25. But, you know, uh, enough of my whole, you know, rambling about, you know, people not understanding the market and how things are going. Yes, 30 million is a lot, but guys are getting 55, 60. Anyways... To talk more about Sangoon, again, I think he is great, but with the amount of elite guard play the Rockets should have, his offensive impact will inevitably be minimized, and thus his defensive woes will probably outweigh his offensive impact. Obviously, you know, hey, he could develop like crazy due to the gravity of the guards and things to go completely, you know, a different way than I just explained, but... You know, and, and, and because of that, you know, I'd give him at least another year or two before moving on. Again, they've been looking at some guys like like there have been a lot of Brooke Lopez rumors. And I think Brooke Lopez would is, you know, he fits the exact archetype of the kind of backup you'd want to Sangoon. But I don't really see the point in paying a 35 year old a ton of money and moving Sangoon to the bench at age 20. Like it's just not like it doesn't really, you know, make much sense. Obviously, Brooke Lopez would make them better right now. But you know, when you really start getting into your contending window, Brooke Lopez will be, you know, 36, 37, 38 on probably a 20 million plus a year deal. It just isn't, again, if Brooke Lopez was a little worse and he could be a backup for them on a, you know, 8 to 12 million a year deal, I think that would be absolutely perfect. And I think that's what they should be looking at for Sangoon, you know, an elite defensive big man backup at around the 8 to 12 million a year price range to, you know, again, help out with those defensive woes. But, like I said, he's only 20 years old, and, you know, again, like I said, he could develop like crazy due to the gravity of the guards. You know, obviously, he is very talented, but, you know, even, even after Jokic, I mean, you know, I, Sengun isn't Jokic, so, you know, I, I'm a very firm believer in the, you know, the, the rim protecting big, I'm not gonna lie, and... I think, you know, if the offense, again, right, like, 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 we'll see where they're at. We'll see as this team really starts to take shape with Ime Udoka and some of these role players that they pick up in free agency. We'll see really what starts going on, but I think a move involving Alperin Sengun and, you know, them eventually getting a, you know, a young, big, potentially with some of those picks, you know, maybe they try and, uh, you know, give Brooklyn some of their picks back and go out and get Nick Claxton. I mean, I, I you know, I, I don't know. That, that was just one thing. That just randomly popped into my mind. But next up, you got Tari Eason, Deshaun Tate, and Kenya Martin Jr. And honestly, I don't really know why I grouped Tari Eason with these guys. I mean, I know it's just kind of like all role players, but Tari Eason's, you know, like going into his second year and the rest of these uh, these other guys are like, you know, K Kenny Martin Jr. is not old and Deshaun Tate hasn't been in the league that long, but he's like 28 or something. But, you know, I think all three of those guys can be good role players, but I think one of Deshaun Tate or Kenya Martin Jr. inevitably get, gets moved. I mean, you know, it's just, I mean, I'm pretty sure Kenny Martin Jr. demanded a trade last year, which is a little, little crazy to me, but I mean, hey, I mean, I'm not going to lie. If I was on that team, I might demand a trade as well, no matter who I am, but yeah, I mean, I, I, you know, again, I think all these guys can be solid role players, but they're probably going to go into a different direction looking for other guys. You know, obviously, like I said, like a potential quality veteran backup big man, defensive oriented to give quality backup minutes to Sangoon. There are many routes that the Rockets can go as far as signings and trades in the coming years, but with the amount of young assets they have, I think they will be getting a quality return no matter which move they do. But I hate to say it, the only thing I think that could really ruin this momentum is James Harden, or I mean, or I guess he may Udoka. Uh, no, nah, I mean, just kidding, or not, maybe, uh, who knows. I really do think paying James Harden an outlandish amount of money is the worst possible move that this franchise could make right now. This is a move that will not help them compete right now or in the future, will handicap them. You know, again, you're like, imagine if you're a Rockets fan and, you know, next year, a couple years from now, you're, you know, you might be able to get a guy like a Jalen Brown, but you can't get off James Harden's contract. You know, that would just be an awful, awful situation. And again, the move doesn't make sense for Harden either. That's the other thing. I think they would be much, much better off bringing in quality role players and going for a big fish free agent in 2024, 25, or 26, while also giving their young core a chance to really develop in a somewhat competitive setting. You know what I mean? They go out and pick up role players and kind of fill out this roster with Ime Udoka, they could potentially, you know, I mean, I, I, I think, you know, th they should be in and around the play-in, you know, you know, maybe they could be, you know, an 8-9 seed, potentially, depending on what they do go out there and do in free agency, but I was pretty down on the Rockets after they landed number four after the season they had, but I do believe that if they play their cards right, they can still easily be among the elite in the Western Conference in the future. 
that's gonna wrap this one up if y'all enjoyed it please like it up and sub the channel i would really really appreciate it, it helps me out a ton and with that being said i am out peace